Good morning, Rich. How are you? GT, I'm doing great. Enjoying the beautiful sunshine, 68 degrees here in St. Andrews. Couldn't be better. Just before the round yesterday, what did you expect out of Tiger Woods? I didn't think he'd win. I thought he'd play well. I just didn't feel like he was ready. Started to change my thinking at about the 10th hole. He had a <laughs> shot of lead, and the world and, and the world was going bananas. In fact, there's a famous little pub here in St. Andrews, a stone's throw from the 18th green called the Dunvegan. Uh, if you've been over here, you, you know it. Yep. And it was jam-packed, I'm told, yesterday. TV's on, and the place was going bonkers for Tiger Woods. That's here in St. Andrews. I mean, it, it was the highest rated final round of the Open since 2006 when Tiger won at Liverpool. Yeah, there's something magical about it, it that it, it, it sort of is, it becomes bigger than golf. It becomes bigger than sports. It became a little, well, you know, it, then it was your curiosity seekers, doubt. right? Dan, the, 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 yeah, the, this, this was, I felt, we started thinking about it because we, we thought we were going to have to deliver the story, which would have been one of the biggest stories, I think, of our lifetime in sports. I mean, this was a recent vintage, you know, a Tiger win, given where he was, was the Cubs winning the World Series for the first time in more than a century. It was LeBron uh, down 3-1 to Golden State, bringing an NBA title to the land. It was, it was something on, on that scale, uh, and it was real at, at the, you know, midway through the afternoon. And, I, I mean, it was as bananas a final round as I can remember. At one point, you had a half dozen guys tied for the lead at six under, uh, and, and some of the names were it was Woods, it was Justin Rose, it was Jordan Speed, it was Rory McIlroy. Uh, and as is so often the case, uh, Mr. Vanilla, you know, Mr. Plain, uh, with, with all due respect, because he is a phenomenal player, all of a sudden, Francesco Molinari wins. Now, did you pipe in the sound behind you? Is this sort of like CBS at Augusta with those seagulls? Very, yes, it's very, uh, very Masters-ish uh, <laughs> with the seagulls here. Uh, hey, by the way, you know what was one of the, the hidden really cool stories yesterday was Eddie Pepperell shooting 67, the Englishman posting five under, leading in the clubhouse, you know, five hours before we were going to finish and, and letting the press know that he just did shoot 67 on one of the hardest courses in the world while hung over, which, which harkens back to the old days when, when pro golfers didn't go to David Ledbetter or Butch Harmon for, or Sean Foley for swing advice. They went to Jim Dean, Jack Daniels, and John Walker, who were some of the <laughs> finest instructors uh, the game has ever known. And anybody who's ever played, right, any of your listeners, they know, if it's going sideways through nine, you're a little tight, uh, just a couple of pops at the turn, and suddenly you find your groove. How much drinking do you think went on previous generation on tour? Copious amount. Was, uh, I mean, it was brown liquor and unfiltered cigarettes. And that was the era of Ben Hogan. They didn't, you know, no, no, nobody went to the gym. They didn't travel with trainers. What you did was long train rides. It was uh, hanging out in hotel bars. Uh, you had a nice pair of slacks. Wherever you went, you put a sport coat on and maybe a tie. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, they got after it. He's Rich Lerner, Golf Channel anchor, reporter, and uh, play-by-play man for the Senior Open at St. Andrews. That'll be Thursday through Sunday at Golf Channel on NBC. What's the one thing that people should see when they go to St. Andrews? Hmm. Uh, the road hole. I mean, if you're a golfer, go stand by the road hole and try to figure it out. Try to figure out what what is all the fuss about. Um, you, you you tee off and you're aiming for room 344 of the old course <laughs> hotel. They're like, I don't get it. Uh, and most of us will park one, you know, at about room 344, right of the tee. Uh, and, and then, you know, up by the green, it's it, like, like four yards from today where the hole was set, four yards from the hole is this road and a, and a stone wall. Uh, and and you, when you get to St. Andrews, you're like, well, I don't really get it. Uh, and, and even 18, the Swoken Bridge, you have everybody stops to have the picture taken where Arnie and Jack and Tom Watson, they all said farewell. And the RNA is behind the green, the old you know, stone facade. 
And you say, it's not much of a golf hole. It's 330-some yards straight away. There's nothing there except hundreds of years of history. And it's such a charming, quaint little town. We just, we're in a bookstore. I bought, you know, just some light reading. Uh, Yubel Noah Harari's Sapiens, A Brief History of Mankind, 466 <laughs> pages of, of easy breezy reading here. Uh, on a, anyway, uh, you know, it, like if you're a golfer, it, it's a must. You, 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 need to, you need to come. I'll leave you with this. Finish the sentence. If Tiger had won the Open Championship yesterday. Um, we'd be buzzing about it for weeks. We'd be thinking about documentaries. Um, I just don't think he's ready, Dan. I, I, you know, the hunger and ambition are there. That's obvious. I think the talent uh, is is polished to a point where absolutely good enough. I, I just don't think competitively he's quite ready. It's it's almost uh, uh, like a young golfer who who needs mm. to. And this sounds strange to say of the all time no doubt about it guy. Uh, he 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 has doubt again. He needs to be in the heat over and over again and figure out how to handle himself uh, because he had this one in his sights. I mean, one shot lead. He had birdied 11, three straight days, and then made double. And we've seen this. Tiger has not been very good in this latest comeback on the back nine. But he's the show. He moves the needle like no one else. Uh, and it, it was, uh, was really exciting. I think the other story yesterday was speed. Uh, hard to figure. There's a vulnerability with Jordan. That's part of his appeal. Fidgety. He's jumpy. Um, but he's, he's the great quarterback who will throw two interceptions and then come back the next game and thread the needle from 20 yards to, to win you a big one. Um, and then yet, yet you have to tip your cap to Molinari. It's rare in sports. I, I, maybe it's Nick Foles-ish. I don't know. Kurt Warner. Uh, when somebody who is regarded as, as a journeyman in their mid-30s suddenly becomes great. And, and maybe he's just great for two months. I don't know, but it looks like he's really figured something out. Uh, he has a little magic now around the greens to go with his peerless cheetah green game. So uh, there you go. It was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a great one. It would have been an epic had Tiger won, uh, but the story uh, lives for another day, maybe the PGA Championship. Rich, uh, it was great to talk to you. Have fun. Tell the boys I said hello, and we'll be watching this week. DP, thanks for having me on. All the best. I'll talk soon. That's uh, Rich Lerner, Golf Channel, anchor and reporter, and handling play-by-play duties. The Senior Open at St. Andrews, Thursday through Sunday, Golf Channel and NBC. Yeah, this is going to be one of those tournaments where you go, oh, by the way, Francesco Malinari ended up winning there. And people look at him and say, well, he doesn't do anything great. He just steady. But Tiger playing with Malinari said he played beautiful golf because on those courses – if you haven't played those courses, man, it can go sideways so quickly where you lose a ball, you go out of bounds, and to be able to hit fairway, green, two putt. And then I kept thinking, he's got to have a birdie down the stretch if he's going to win this. And then he had two birdies down the stretch. But I believe the numbers in his last three tournaments, and somebody can help me with this, last three tournaments he's played, on the weekend, a total of one bogey. That's playing great golf. And he played, you know, under par golf on Saturday and Sunday to win a major. And uh, I have no problems with that at all. But it was, it was a lot of fun to watch. And that environment, and those are knowledgeable golf fans. Uh, and, and just see the different lies that you have and, you know, what they have to deal with. It's just something completely different than anything they face all year long. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.